USA Radio News with Chris Barnes. Amid the coronavirus pandemic, which has touched every nation on the planet, some musicians are recreating a well-known song to try to inspire people during the pandemic. We are the world. We are the children. We are the That's the work of 70 musicians from New York's Long Island who created the We Are the World 2020 quarantine mix with each of the recordings done remotely from each artist's home. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, who recently dropped out of the race for the White House, is now officially endorsing former VP Joe Biden for the Democratic nomination. During a joint teleconference from their homes in Delaware and Vermont yesterday, Sanders said the nation needs Biden in the Oval Office. And Biden said the endorsement means a great deal to him. And you're listening to USA Radio News. This report is brought to you by the College Board. The unprecedented spread of the coronavirus has closed schools across the country, some for the rest of the year. So what about the millions of high school students who have been working hard to earn college credits by taking advanced placement classes? The College Board has unveiled virtual supports for students, including free, live, and on-demand AP review lessons on YouTube and the first-ever online AP exams. Students can take the AP exam at home on a device of their choice in a safe, comfortable environment. Trevor Packer is the Senior Vice President for Advanced Placement and Instruction at the College Board. We've surveyed AP students nationwide and the vast majority want to take the exam. That's why we've set up a process that's simple, secure, and accessible. We want to make sure that every student has the chance to earn the college credit they've been working so hard for. The 45-minute online exams will be given from May 11th through May 22nd. Makeup test dates will also be available. To learn more, visit cb.org. Administration officials continue to plan how the country will get back to work once the pandemic winds down. And the top infectious disease expert says it needs to be based purely on health data. Here's USA Radio's Robin Walensky. Some people may think it's going to be like a light switch on and off. You know, we're either out and we're in. It's just not going to be that way because we have a very large country. Dr. Anthony Fauci at the Daily White House coronavirus briefing explaining to the American people the process in which it will be determined how we can all get back to work. Fauci says it will be based on the medical data. And there are different impacts. As you see, New York is very different from other parts of the country, from the Midwest, from the mountain region, California and Washington and different than New Orleans. So as we discuss and consider the public health aspects, it likely would be something that I refer to as sort of like a rolling re-entry. It's not going to be one size fits all. USA Radio News. Here's your Georgetown forecast from the Hip Radio Network Weather Center. Lots of sunshine today with daytime highs approaching 60. North winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Mainly clear skies and quiet again tonight. Lows dip down to about 42. High of 63 tomorrow. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times. Temps below average. Wednesday and Thursday with highs from the mid-60s to the mid-70s. That's a look at your forecast. I'm meteorologist Paul Frobley. Currently, it's 42 degrees. Five. Four, three, two, one. The switch is on. Welcome to Good Morning Georgetown with Robin Ken. Waking you up in the mornings and getting your day started with the hottest hits, news, and jokes. Get ready. And now, here's your host, Rob Hip and Ken Covington. Hey, good morning, Georgetown. Time now is 7.45 a.m. Appreciate you joining us on a chilly but beautiful day ahead here in Central Texas, and especially in Georgetown. I want to welcome everybody into the broadcast this morning. It is always our true joy, honor, and privilege to bring you on this show as we talk about Georgetown and just have a lot of fun, we also want to encourage you this morning. As always, on Tuesday mornings, we are joined by my good friend of the Oak Ridge Disciple House, Mr. Joshua Harris, as I bring you in. Good morning, Josh. What's going on, my man? Good morning, Rob Hip from Copperas Cove, Texas. Coppers we are in Cove. day, I think, 28 or 29 of this incredible time in our lives. But you know what? 
not that I'm getting used to it, but I'm kind of getting into a flow. I'm starting to really kind of see the backside of this uh, situation. I know we still got some days to go, but uh, you know, we're, uh, I think we're learning a lot about ourselves. I think this has been a gift in a way for all of us to really kind of get back to the basics and, and not take things for granted. And uh, man, I'm excited about being on the radio with you this morning and doing Tuesdays. So good morning, Georgetown and good morning, Rob. Now, Joshua Harris of the Oak Ridge Disciple House, good morning to you. Just before we dig in, the Oak Ridge Disciple House, the sponsor here of this station on HRN, a 501c3 nonprofit Christian character building ministry, helping men 18 and older who are suffering from drug and alcohol addiction. If you or someone you know needs help, there is light at the end of the tunnel. That light, friends, can be found through the Oak Ridge Disciple House. For more information online at oakridgedisciplehouse.com, that is Oak Ridge Disciple House. Dot com. Josh, what's going on this morning? It is chill. It is unseasonably. I said that word without stutter, without kind of stuttering it up. Unseasonably cool outside. It is forty-two you know, degrees. It's, yeah, it's chilly. I talked to a friend this morning that had the had a, the, a, the fireplace going. Uh, not you know firewood, but they have that you know uh, I guess click on one. And, they had, and it, I was like, wow, you know, only in April in Texas could you have a fire. Uh, going in that and, and just uh, doing their devotional and coffee and uh yeah so who knows they took the cover off my swimming pool yesterday and started to get that cleaned up and it's going to take a little bit to uh, get that water uh, warmed up but uh yeah who, who knows man we, we might build a snowman tomorrow uh you just never know in texas well you know we've had some crazy weather of course uh in blanco county and Fre- our friends in fredericksburg luckily nobody uh, losing there was two injuries from the recent storms and that was just crazy the other night you know we i thought bridget was joking because she i was up all night the other night Josh. i can't sleep when there's severe weather and i was up all night and uh, the tornado alarm here in georgetown started going off i guess around 5 30 or, or 6 and bridget told me and I, I said i don't hear it and it did man did you guys have any bad weather up there in copper's cove we did have we did have about about four four thirty came coming through and I had my boys this weekend and uh, and it woke Luke up and he's a little bit it was rattling the house a little bit some some good lightning and thunder and so we had some good storms actually my my drive gate uh, got uh, the latch on it got busted and so they're coming out to fix that uh, got to have that gate working on this house because of that swimming pool there's the risk management and, and safety can't have it open when you have a swimming pool so uh, hopefully they'll get out here today and get that fixed but yeah. We had some good good weather. I'm thankful that we didn't have anything major, uh, but I know there were some severe, severe tornadoes that killed. I think 19 is the last number that I heard. Uh, they what I believe, in Oklahoma or somewhere around there. And so, yeah, crazy weather. Uh, that hot air hits that cold air, and what sure does kick up some storms. Yeah, some of the, uh, unfortunately, some of the recent numbers here this morning, and I wasn't aware of this, Josh. You know, I usually I tend to keep up with the weather quite a bit, and it's crazy because we've got snow going on you know, up in the panhandle of Texas, and we have severe weather coming through our area. 33 people, that's the latest numbers as of yesterday morning around 6.30. Uh, 33 people passing away after tornadoes ripped through the south early on Easter Sunday, that destroying homes and storefronts, leaving over a million people without power uh, from intense storms now headed towards the mid-Atlantic. Reading this here from NBC News, tornadoes and other severe weather hitting central Texas early Sunday bringing what they quoted as gigantic hail and damage, and then traveling east through Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, and the Carolinas. In Mississippi, the state's emergency management agency said 11 people passed away in at least three counties near the Louisiana border, uh, seven more losing their lives in Georgia. In Tennessee, there were three people who were killed, police deploying at least 26 teams of officers to check on residents who needed emergency assistance. And then, Josh, the numbers, just just tragic numbers on an Easter Sunday. Nine people passed away in South Carolina, including five in the very small city of Seneca, an emergency management official there said. These were, uh, and it, it's usually, you know, you hear about the debris. That's what makes, not the winds, it's the debris that makes these tornadoes so bad. And and in this one, falling trees uh, fueled by powerful winds, uh, killing two people across the region. This was a man in his home in Arkansas, and a woman also in her bedroom in North Carolina. Just tragic news. You know, we, we want to keep it positive here, but we also want to make sure that we don't forget about our friends across the nation and those that are struggling as well through certain situations. So please keep all of these folks in the South 
in the southeast, uh, our neighbors in, in neighboring states, and your thoughts and prayers this morning. Just tragic news on an Easter Sunday, man. You hate to hear that, especially with all this coronavirus that's going on, man. Yeah, Rob, I tell you, much prayer for the for those families, and it is it's hard. I mean, any day you lose anybody, but on a, on Easter things like that, something you'll never forget, of course. And so, hey, I tried to fix my volume, and oh, but I good. do hear a little bit of echo. Is it better? Yeah, it's better, man. Thank you for that. Appreciate okay, that. Okay, great. Sorry about that. No, folks. we got this. Uh, we got the old Zoom going, and hey, you know this this platform is pretty cool, man, because. It was right before all of, literally, the week before you and I decided that you were going to be on every Tuesday morning, this coronavirus situation shut everything down, and, and I was a little bummed out because I, I said, man, well, how are we going to keep doing the show? How are you and I going to keep talking? And I've used Zoom for years, but you know, I never really thought about using it on the morning show. And I'll tell you what, man, it has worked out great. I, I You know, I've... You would you would you would agree with this, and me and you both would agree. But I'd still would rather have you sitting here next to me. But this works for now, and we're able to do what we need to do to keep this show rolling, man. It's really fun, and I tell you, I of course click in every morning with all your different uh, hosts, and and uh, it's great that even during a time like this, we can we can still do the show and still encourage people uh, it, from different locations. And so you know, even through it all, we have to just thank God for the technology that we have today. And, uh, yeah, it's what makes it a lot of fun. And so I do look forward, though, to the day where I can meet you back up there at the radio st- uh, studio and uh, and just be a part of that connection uh, together. And it, it is, a, of course, a great dynamic. And so but it but it, but I do I, I am very thankful that we can do this remotely uh, uh, as we need to do this to get through this time. Yeah. And Josh, you know, I've, I'm, th- I'm I'm looking forward to getting back to the radio studio because I've been working remotely. And even though technically, you know, what I'm doing may fall under an essential business, I don't want to risk anything. Look, I've got an opportunity here to do this remotely from my home studio. I've been calling it the remote Ashley Real Estate Broadcast Studio. I've got an opportunity to do it from here at home. And, and look, there's no point of getting out. If, if, if you are an essential business and you have to get out, I get it. What I do, I don't have to get out. I really don't. I don't, I don't have to get away from here. I don't have to move around. Uh, you know, there's only a few people that I see because we know that we know their situation and where they've been and that they're not moving around. And other than that, man, I've just been working right here out of this out of this home studio. I've had a lot of folks reach out and be like, hey, can I come to the studio and do a show? Can I? And I was like, no. Well, you're we could. It's essential. I said, look, I, we don't need to do that, man. We just need to stay put if we can and do what we do because we just got to take care of each other. And so that's what we've been doing here. So I am looking forward to getting back up to Gerald, man. I, I miss Miss Garlin, I see her every morning during the week. I haven't been able to see her. Uh, Mr. Ashby and all the fine folks up at his office, I haven't been able to see them. And so I am looking. One thing that I'm thankful for about this, Josh, though, is because when, you know, people don't see this off camera, but whenever you show up in person, you always punch me a few times. And I've been very thankful for that because I don't get beat up before the show in the morning. So I appreciate that. Well, yeah, you you bet. And I feel like, you know, it, you got to get, uh, beat up a little bit, you know, just to kind of keep you humble and keep you, you know, grounded, uh, well, and, uh, you know, uh, but I do miss that. The, the, those days will come back. I think God's, you know, uh, I've been working out a little bit more too. So there's more time here at the house and, uh, so I'm getting a little stronger and, uh, I look forward to the days when I can bring the pain again, uh, into your life. And, and, you know, Bridget, Bridget appreciates that as well. And so good morning, Bridget. We know you're listening and, uh, you're the best, best part of, of Rob's world. And so we, uh, we're thankful for you and all that you put up with. <laughs> yeah. I love you, Bridget. Man, I'll tell you, it's, uh, we're just, we're just joking by the way. That does not happen. But, uh, keep it, what'd you say? Keeping you humble, keeping you on it. You got to keep them honest. Yeah, keep you grounded, honest, humble, you know? Yeah. It's, it, it, it's my joy and privilege. Well, go uh, to bring that to your life. Man. It's my true joy, honor, and privilege to bring that yes. punch to you every Tuesday morning. Every Tuesday morning. But, man, it's going to be a great day. It's a beautiful day outside. It's a little chilly, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And we Here's the here's the reality. We need to appreciate these cool mornings because I'm going to tell you, there's going to be a time here in the next couple of weeks where we're going to wake up and it's going to be 85 and humid out this time of the morning. So I, I, woke, I walked out this morning and just – Said good morning to the Lord, and it's so nice. wasn't too cold, but just perfect this morning to start a great Tuesday. So I'm a, I'm I'm still appreciating this cooler weather. Well, this uh, remote Ashby Real Estate broadcast studio that I work out of here at the house, you know, uh, I've got an air conditioner in here, and I've got one of those old. I say old school. It's not old school. It's a newer, but one of those 
what do you call them? Oil heaters? You know, the, the radiator heaters with, that have the metal fins in them? And so I have that, but if I don't turn that, those take a while to heat up. But, man, once they heat up, they're really energy efficient because once they heat up, they keep putting out the heat. And it's so cool wow. because the way they radiate and work is literally, if you, can let, if you can let a room just soak in that heat, everything starts turning warm. I'm talking about you touch like a piece of plastic, the plastic is warm. You know, whenever it's cold outside and you've got something metal in a building, Josh, or you've got something metal in your car and you touch it, it's, it's, it's really cold. Well, these radiating heaters put out put out such a good amount of heat, but you got to leave them on for a while to get started. That literally, you touch metal in a cold building, and the metal will be warm. And wow. I haven't been cranking it on overnight, you know, to get it ready for the morning. So I come in here, and it's a little chilly in the studio, man. You have a heater in the studio there at the house that you literally could probably turn on the night before to get the room heated up. Yeah, dude, it's old school, baby. We got to get it cranked that up is, early. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I keep Does it. your car still crank from the front as well? Oh, yeah, dude. I, yeah, I've got the little crank handle on the front of the car. You know, it's it's you just yeah. crank that up to get it going, get it warmed up. I had a, yeah. I had a friend in, in <laughs> high school. Her dad had this old school... Man, what was that bad boy? It was like a Merce- I think it was a Mercedes diesel engine car. I'm talking old school diesel car. Back when I guess they first started putting diesel engines in America. I don't know how. It- Look, I'm not going to pretend I know what I'm talking about. So just scratch whatever I just said about when they first started cuz I have no clue, Josh. <laughs> but I do know this is that that car would not start if he did not have a heating lamp on the engine the night before. I have no idea why, but he had to keep a heating lamp under the hood every night to get that car to start in the morning. No matter if it was, you know, 20 or 30 degrees outside or 50 or 60 degrees. If it was a, if it was hot outside, it would start. But if it was cool, the car would not start. He had to put a heating lamp on the engine. And he was a doctor. So imagine telling your patients, you know, let's just say that what if he didn't make it to work one day on time? Sorry, we missed your appointment. I forgot to put the heating lamp on the car overnight. Those are the days, I tell you, boy. We, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. <laughs> That's what we're talking about here this wow. morning. So, but anyways, friends, well, Rob, what's going on in the world today, man? I know we've got some, uh, you know, we've got a lot going on. I loved yesterday hearing you talk about all the businesses that are trying to get involved to support each other with the auction and so forth. What, uh, What's transpired over the last 24 hours? Anything good? Well, I wanted to mention, uh, I did want to mention this. We were talking earlier about those storms throughout Central, throughout the United States over Easter. There was some tornadic activity right here close to home in, in Blanco County, and I was going to allude to that a little bit more here. Uh, in fact, my friend Jeff Mangum. Do you know Jeff Mangum by any chance, Josh? Can I tell you something? I love, love, love. All of the Mangums. I love that whole family. That whole family, uh, you know, number one, first and foremost, love the Lord with all their heart. Serve the Lord in lots of different ministries throughout, you know, the, this area. Uh, and uh, I've been I've been friends with the Mangum family for years now. Been they've been supporters and prayer warriors for Oak Ridge and Pat. You know, the matriarch of that family, and just love all of the Mangum family. So good morning. If any of y'all are listening, we love y'all, Mangums. Well, I wanted to uh, point out Jeff is an avid, hardcore tornado chaser, and he's got a ton of yes. followers now on YouTube. It's amazing if you ever get a chance. And, and he grew up here in Georgetown, and he was my youth minister way back in the day, man. Yeah, man. And I love Jeff and his wife. They're such wonderful folks. And and I'm going to tell you, man, Jeff does incredible work. There's, a, there's some guys that just storm chase to storm chase. Jeff storm chases because he loves – he loves to do it because he likes to share information with people and help them. And I'm going to tell you, man, you got to be number one. You got to be crazy to be a storm chaser in a good way. Number two, you better love or the, just crazy. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. tell you, I love watching those shows, but I wouldn't want to be the ones caught in the center of those things. It's crazy. You've you, got to have a, there's a, there's a disconnect, not in a bad way, but you've got, you've got something that's missing when it comes to fear and, and that stress level, you got to have like, crazy um you know just uh that adrenaline and all those things i I couldn't do it man i just it would freak me out too much to be dead center on on a tornado or you know some of these hail storms and things like that but i love watching them but i love watching them from afar 
I don't know. I was trying to look up here. The National Weather Service had issued some information uh, the other day about that storm, and I just can't find it right now. I should have had it pulled up, you know, a little bit earlier. Uh, they had issued some information, at least two confirmed storm tracks, and I'm sure that once they get all that figured out, you know, they send out really knowledgeable meteorologists that know what's up, and they can look at damage trails, and they can determine what force that tornado was. Now, back in the day, it was the Fujita scale, Fujita scale. That was developed by a meteorologist, a very smart man, way back in the day. And then as storms seemed like they were a little bit more severe, they said, we've got to come up with a new way to categorize these storms. And really, Josh, a lot of it started, I believe, after the more Oklahoma tornadoes. If you'll remember back in the first big one, I believe it was in 1999. I had family up in that area. Uh, more Oklahoma again was hit in 03. I believe they were they were hit again in 2008 and then again in 2013. But Josh, the, the one that hit in 99 was the first time that a tornado was ever tracked on the ground with what's called dual Doppler radar. And what they did it, up and I used to be a big weather nerd, Josh, and I think you may have known this, but I, I you know, I'm not an expert, but I used to be a huge, huge weather nerd. I, I thought growing up I was going to be a meteorologist. So I, I, I keep up with a lot of weather stuff. I don't do it as much as I used to, but that was the first time that they were able to do what's called a dual Doppler on the ground. They had two big trucks. Now, up in Oklahoma, in Norman, Oklahoma, is the Storm Prediction Center and the National Severe Storms Laboratory. So the NSSL will issue a lot of these warnings and, and the Storm Prediction Center, the SPC, they're the guys. You know, you may you may have a tornado warning in the East Coast, and sometimes those warnings may be coming from a Storm Prediction Center that's, you know, way, way across the nation in Oklahoma, which is incredible if you think about that. Anyways, back when this happened, it was the first time that they were ever, ever able to put – Two, it was really two huge 18 wheelers, Josh, that had Doppler radars that were scanning. And what happened was it was the first time they were ever to, it, it's kind of like the movie Twister, but they didn't have to put the little probes in there. They were able to capture a 3D image of this tornado because each of those trucks got on either side of that tornado in 1999. What the results were from that test is they said, we have really got to change the way that we categorize the force of these storms. And so they moved it. You used to hear about the F scale, like F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. After right. those tornadoes in 99, and I could be mistaken on this, but I, I, I seem to remember this, that in 1999, after that dual Doppler situation, and they were able to get a lot more information than they were ever able to obtain, they came out with the enhanced Fujita scale. And that's why now you'll see it categorized as an EF1, an EF2, an EF3. And... It's pretty interesting stuff, man. You know, I, I like to still read about it. And it, in fact, the other night, whenever those storms were planned, it's probably one reason I couldn't sleep is because I was watching a bunch of tornado documentaries, man. I just, you know, and then it's like, uh, wait a minute, we're under a tornado warning or a tornado watch. Maybe I shouldn't be reading all and watching all these. And I dreamed about it that night when I finally dozed off for a little bit. So just be careful. Wow. Josh. Anyway, yeah. a little bit of weather weather nerd for you this morning, Josh. You know what? I can see that in you, and, and I know that, uh, you know, here we go. My clock's going to strike eight times, so it's a little bit behind, but uh, we'll get through that. Hang on real quick. And so while Josh is, is – Letting the, the everyone clock. know, if you are an essential business and you were supposed to be at work at eight, you are now late. <laughs> the Joshua Harris <laughs> the Joshua Harris clock is ticking. That clock is at, yes. yeah. That clock is behind five minutes. It's eight oh five. It's behind five minutes. It's a little bit older grandfather clock. It's a mini, and it always I can set it perfectly when I wind it, and then within a day or two, it's always five minutes behind. But it doesn't ever go. It's crazy. It doesn't ever uh, go more than five minutes. You would think it would continue to run slower and slower, but it gets to about five minutes behind, and that's where it stays for the rest of the month. So I don't know. Uh, it's got a mind of its own, and I let it do what it does because I love it and I love the time. And uh, so, yeah. But I can see that, 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 you know, just media in you, period. you got a great voice. You're making great weather, man. But I'm going to tell you right now, Rob, there's nobody, nobody like our good friend, Jim, Jim. Doppler Day. No, that's right. I thought you were going to say Jim Spencer, man. <laughs> no, Doppler Day. Doppler Day. We Dave. miss you, Doppler Dave. If you're listening, I don't know if you get an opportunity to listen. Uh, Dave is great. Uh, first responder here in Georgetown firefighter and and just does so much great stuff for the community but we 
love Doppler Dave on SHF Sports and him giving us the weather reports before games and oh, just uh, just love you guys. So uh, we miss you, Dave. We miss all of the team, don't we, Rob? Yeah, miss doing baseball would be right now, you know. Doppler Dave. Well, I, I want to finish up this thought here uh, about the tornadoes that we had on Easter here in Central Texas. There was two confirmed, and they they said that there may be more than that. The National Weather Service is still trying to put together their final analysis. Uh, one of them, though, they said left a, a path of about 200 yards of damage, and then it, that extended about six miles. This happened in Gillespie County, just north of Fredericksburg, around 4.30 a.m. to 4.50. And check this out, Josh. I had no clue about this. I'm reading this on KXAN. I knew that Jeff, of course, is a storm chaser, but check this out. The first tornado touched down northeast of Fredericksburg just after 4.30 a.m. Now, here it is, Josh. Get ready. KXAN, storm chaser jeff mangum saw the tornado cross at 1631 right in front of him jeff actually took a picture of that tornado as it crossed at 4 30 in the morning i had no clue that he was an official kxan storm chaser josh i'm learning this morning yeah you know i've been watching some of his stuff over the last year or two and, and you know, he'll post a lot a lot of stuff on uh instagram as well and so yeah he uh he's got that that craziness in him to go and be a part of all that. But I tell you what, without those guys, we wouldn't get the reports and you wouldn't get to study up on it and so forth. Have you ever maybe approached him to, to go out and do some stuff with him or go on one of those, uh, you know, uh, storm chasing events that he does? I, like we said earlier, you got to have a whole nother le- level of crazy. And I don't know if I have that level, but I would, you know what, if I did though, if I did decide to ever Josh go on a storm chase, I would go with Jeff Mangum because he's got the tools and he knows what's up. He's been doing it for a long yeah. time. He's very safe with what he does. I can only imagine, Christy, what, what goes through her mind when her husband goes out and storm chases. I have no yeah, idea. I think, you ought to, I think you ought to cross that one, just do it one time off your bucket list and, uh, and see if that's something that uh, you really enjoy. Well, hey, time now, a little bit after 8 a.m. We will step aside and take a quick break as uh, we will run our weather here at the top of the hour on KHGTDB. It's Georgetown's hometown station. We've got a lot of this day today, National Day things that we're going to go over. So we're going to go over those. I don't. Do you have any this day in history today, Josh? No, I hadn't pulled anything, but while you're on break, I'll see if I can find some cool stuff. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about what National Day is it of. There's a lot of things today. Some of them are really exciting. And then after that, we're going to talk about this day in history. We're going to talk about what's going on in Georgetown. And I've also got a very special announcement uh, for a very dear friend that I went to high school with and her family this morning in ways that you can help their business here in Georgetown. They reached out to me. They said, Rob, can you help? And I said, you better believe I will because this is a young lady that I've known since we were in school growing up together. And I'm going to talk about their business and encourage you to help their business out during this time. We'll step aside and take a break. It's 8.09 a.m. here on Good Morning Georgetown. It's Georgetown's hometown station. You are listening to KHGT-DB, Hip Radio Network. Good Morning Georgetown returns here in a few moments. Georgetown forecast from the Hip Radio Network Weather Center. Lots of sunshine today with daytime highs approaching 60. North winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Mainly clear skies and quiet again tonight. Lows dip down to about 42. High of 63 tomorrow. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times. Temps below average Wednesday and Thursday with highs from the mid 60s to the mid 70s. That's a look at your forecast. I'm meteorologist Paul Frombley. Currently it's 42 degrees. From the Ashby Real Estate Broadcast Studio, this is Hip Radio Network, Georgetown, your hometown station. Well, 
Good morning, Georgetown. Thanks for waking up with us today. Now time, 8, 11 a.m. here on KGTDB. It's Good Morning Georgetown on Georgetown's hometown station. I'm Rob Hipp alongside my good friend Joshua Harris of the Oak Ridge Disciple House as we're bringing you a Tuesday edition of Good Morning Georgetown. And uh, we've been talking this morning just about the weather throughout the United States and just trying to uh, continue to encourage folks as we do here on the morning show. Josh, welcome back, man. Hey, good morning, Georgetown. If you're just tuning in, we've had a little bit of fun this morning. And Rob, I looked up, we got some cool stuff that happened today in history that uh, and I wasn't even aware of. And I'll get, I'll get to that when you're ready. Yeah, we'll go over that. Friends, as, as I told you before, we took that quick break here at the top of the hour. There's a lot of businesses in our community that need help. Uh, we have had now, I'm just looking through the list of businesses that are open. Now, these aren't necessarily businesses that may need help. These are just businesses that have reached out to us and said, look, we're open and we want people to know that we're open. And a lot of them do need help. And if they're reaching out, that's because they need they need business. They need folks. They want you to know that they're open. We've had 32 of those businesses fill out our form. I've got to input that data manually to transcribe it over to our website. And I'm going to work on that today. So if your business isn't on the website yet at hrngeorgetown.com forward slash open, don't worry, we are working to get the rest of those up. And if you have a business that you'd like to let us know that you are open, feel free to submit that to hrngeorgetown.com forward slash open. I talked about it on the show yesterday. Again, hrngeorgetown.com forward slash open. Josh, I did want to point out a, a very special one. And look, I don't, I don't want to offend any other business if I'm not calling yours out specifically. Uh, we want to always give credit to our sponsors because they're the ones that really make this station work, Josh. And our listeners especially. Without our sponsors, without our listeners, this station would not exist. Uh, but there is one business specifically. They're not a sponsor here on HRN. But, Josh, this is a, a young lady that I have known, like I said, since pretty much elementary school, someone whose family has worked really hard. And if you were, on the, if you were listening to the show yesterday, and so many of you were that are on Facebook Live, there's a lot of you that are listening on the HRN app as well, and I want to welcome you into this broadcast. And I'll get to those Facebooks here in a little bit. I had mentioned yesterday there's a lot of really awesome, amazing, popular restaurants here in this community, and, and I believe that those restaurants, after all this is over, they're, they're hurting right now, Josh, just like anybody else. Uh, but I think that a lot of them are going to rebound. It's going to take a while, but they're going to rebound. There's a lot of really small mom-and-pop restaurants that may not be as popular that have been in this community for a long time that it may take them a lot longer to get going again. Uh, you know, there's a lot of these. One of them in specific – and I, I haven't been in a while, and, and this has really triggered me to go because I think the world of her and her family, it's Rio Bravo Mexican Cafe. They reached out to me. Their daughter, it's the Canales family that owns this restaurant. They have been in Georgetown for, I don't even want to estimate, they've been in Georgetown for an incredibly long time because Pearl and I went to school together in elementary school and all throughout school, and her family is tremendous. But they had reached out. They said, Rob, can you help us? And when someone reaches out, Josh, and I'm not talking about just the form. When somebody reaches out to me and they take that extra step and they say, can you help us? I can uh, I can understand that they – I'm not dis discrediting anybody else who's filled out the form because everybody no. needs help. But when they took that extra step, I knew that they needed some help. And so I want to encourage our listeners this morning. We have a medium here with HRN to help out folks and to reach people in our community. And that's why we started this station – and that's why we do what we do, and that's one reason why we have this morning show. But if you could do me a huge favor and help out the Canales family and Rio Bravo Mexican Cafe, they wanted folks to know that they are open. They have to-go orders available. And if you don't know where Rio Bravo is, it's, it's back around the corner. It's actually behind Dos Salsas. There's Main Street Baptist Church in that area. There's a there's a, a little small shopping center right there next to Jack Brown Cleaners. There's a tax. Uh, there used to be a CPA over there. I believe there used to be a hair and nail salon. And Rio Bravo is right in the middle of those businesses, right there next to Jack Brown Cleaners. But Pearl had reached out. She wanted folks to know they have to-go orders that are available for an early breakfast taco as well as lunch orders. And I've had lunch there. When I had Click, Josh, way back in the day around on University there at 29 and Austin Avenue, we would walk over there and have lunch. Excellent food, wonderful family. They are open with to-go orders, again, for breakfast tacos. In fact, I know a gentleman named Frank Hernandez that eats there, and I, I believe to this day, well, of course not right now, but Josh – he was there every morning eating breakfast tacos. Every morning, 
If you wanted to see Mr. Hernandez, go over to Rio Bravo. He was there every single morning. Well, Rob, I appreciate you telling me. I didn't even know, and, and, and a lot of and folks know. No I didn't even, yeah. I didn't even know that that re- that restaurant existed. But I will be in Georgetown today. I try to go in twice a week to get the things done that I need to get done. But uh, I'm going to go by there and get. So, is it just breakfast and lunch, or are they doing a the dinner? I'm going to be in Georgetown about one o'clock, and I'll make a commitment to go by there and get a to-go plate today as well. I'm looking at the hours here. Yeah, they are open, and in fact, today I'm going to get a to-go order. Uh, for I want to support I want to support the Canales family. They I do are, too. They are open today. Uh, they're open. Looks like every day, Saturday through or Sunday through Saturday. They put on the form here from six a.m. to one p.m. So you may, if it's oh. at one, you may miss it today, Josh. But next time you're in the area, they're yeah. open from six a.m. to uh, again to one p.m. Look them up on Facebook for their menu options at Rio Bravo Mexican Cafe. Again, it's Rio Bravo Mexican Cafe. And I just wanted to encourage folks here in Georgetown, look, they reached out to me. They reached out to me and they said, we need help. And uh, so that's what we're going to do today is is I want to encourage you. If you can help out the Canales family, uh, please go by there and get you something to eat today. You know, call ahead first. And in fact, Josh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up their Facebook here and I'm going to put that uh, down on the Facebook. So I just wanted to spend some time this morning because I told Perla, she reached out. I said, look, Perla, I said, I love you and your family, and we are going to use our platform this morning to meet that request. And so that is what we're doing here today. And, yeah, they they are on Facebook here. I see see their page. And, man, it's really cool. If you go to their Facebook, they got a bunch of old cars out front on pictures. I mean, this looks like old Model T Fords, man. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to go by there and check it out. And now what I'll try to do is get by there because I won't be back in Georgetown uh, probably till later this week. But I'm, I'm going to I'm going to definitely get by there. I make that commitment to get by there and definitely support that business. And I know that some of these smaller businesses, like you said, are they are struggling. But I do believe and I believe our president when he says, listen, we're going to have such a surge back into this economy. People are ready to get out. People are ready to, to go and visit places and get back together. And so I think once we get going again, I think, uh, especially in Georgetown, we're, you're going to see that square packed. And uh, we're going to just get these businesses pumped back up and, you know, spend some of this gas money that we have saved for sure. And with gas prices being as awesome as they are, let's make a commitment to some of that gas money that we've saved, get it pumped back into our community. I, I wanted to and, and and look, Josh. Here, here's the and I and I hope that Perla doesn't mind me mentioning this because she sent me a message, a pretty long message. I'm just going to read an expert, uh, an expert. I'm not. A, I'm going to read an yeah, ex, do an, an ex, expert, do an ex, an do excerpt, an expert reading, Rob. An excerpt of uh, what Perla yeah. had sent me. Uh, she just asked, "What what do I what can I do to to let people know that we are open?" And she's talking about her mom's restaurant. Uh, I believe it's Connie. Rio Bravo Mexican Cafe. She said, "What, what, what can we do for you to help?" And I, and she had asked, and she said they had to be closed for three weeks, and desperately wanted to open today. But for small business, things are really slow. I would appreciate your recommendations that you may have. And so that was just a small excerpt of that. And you, you talk about a small business like that, Josh, that yeah. has been closed for th- for three weeks. That's just not good. So it's can, not good and it's tough, boy. It's tough, especially you know, just smaller mom and pop. But I still love those mom and pop places. And I bet you this, and you probably could attest to this, that that food is so good and so authentic because it's just made right there in house, fresh every day. And uh, I'm excited about trying. What's one of the things that you enjoy over there, Rob? I like their ta- their breakfast tacos, man. They're just it's it's extremely authentic Mexican food. That's I, what I love. I remember in high school, somebody in a, in a class was talking about Mexican food, and Perla kind of stood up, and she goes, you have no idea, because she she just straight up said, look, we, we cook authentic Mexican food, and, Boy, and, and, per, and Perla said it with a lot, not in a rude way, but in a, I just specifically, and Perla, if you're watching or listening, I remember you saying that. You may be like, what are you talking about? But I remember... It was, I believe it was an English class and somebody was talking about just like really, it was someone that had moved here recently back in the day and they were saying, man, this is good Mexican food. And Perla, she goes, you have no clue. You need to come check out my family's restaurant and you will experience true authentic Mexican food. And so, oh, I bet. 
So I just I wanted to, just wanted to say that one more time. I've put their their link on Facebook, so please go like it. And can you do that for us today, Georgetown? We talk so much about a, a community that pours out and reaches out. This is an excellent opportunity today. So I'm just going to encourage all of you out there that are listening on the app, that are here locally, or those that are on Facebook. I'm going to say it one more time. Give Rio Bravo a call today. And they're, uh, they're, you can find their Facebook page at Rio Bravo Mexican Cafe. And I'm also going to put their phone number here. I'm going to tell it to you right now. So write this down. It's really easy. 930-1327. It's 512, of course, 930-1327. 930-1327. Give them a call. And get your orders in. And let's really support Let's really support the Canales family, man. So that's what I'm going to ask. I think that's today. awesome, Rob. And I think if everyone that's, that hears you right now that can do it, we'll do it. You can, we can really put a push back into their budget and back into their, you know, uh, uh, success today and get them encouraged and going, you know what, we're going to be okay because uh, people have responded to Rob's plea. And, uh, and I plead with you as well to get out there and support that family today. John Montgomery. Hey, I'm going to go through some Facebook shout outs this morning. Miss Sharon Rudisill joining us saying good morning. Carly Pilgrim. Stephen Giorgio, macaroni buddy, is on this morning. What's up, Stephen? He calls me by my first name. I love it, man, because my real name, Josh, you knew this. My real first name is Robin. You knew that, right? What's that? You knew my first name is really Robin. It's not Rob, right? Robin, yeah, I did. Robin. And as a matter of fact, somebody Robin. posted yesterday. Good morning, Robin, and uh, on the Facebook and and so yeah, Rock and Robin, man, yeah. Rock and Robin on the air. Tweet, tweet, tweetly, tweet, baby. Tweetly, <laughs> yeah. In fact, a, a buddy of mine's grandpa used to call me Robin Redbreast because the birds, you know, the Robin bird has a red chest. He'd call me Robin Love Redbreast. It. Anyway, since Steve, and that's a family. Is that that's a family name? What's the history behind that, Rob? I think you've talked about it before. What's the history behind Robin? No, there did no history behind Rob. My sister. So the deal was, from my understanding, is that I don't think, and maybe I'm wrong, and my mom can correct me on this, and my dad, but I I don't think that they wanted to know if I was a. They didn't want to know if I was a boy or a girl till I was born. I may be wrong on that. That's, I don't even, but that's, that's for some reason, that's specifically what I remember. My sister, from my understanding, is the one who came up with my name, and she picked a name that could, that could either be used for a boy or a girl. So that's kind of cool. So if, you, if you're that kind of person, you say, look, I want to go ahead and name my kid, and I want to be set on the name of the kid, but I don't know if it's a boy or a girl till I have it, just pick a name. that. Here's the thing. One in three guys in England are named Robin. I love my name. Rob, I tell you, your sister. Robin, I Robin. Have to meet, I don't. I haven't met her, but some of the things that she puts you through in your younger years. I know you guys have a great relationship now, <laughs> but man, you shared. I think it was last week or the week before. Uh, I wasn't. I, I wasn't on with you, but you had somebody else on, and you were sharing some of the the horror that this sister of yours put you through <laughs> as a little boy. And I just absolutely just want to hug her when we're able to hug again and say, thank you for the, for the torment that you put your little brother through. I love it, man. I mean, dressing you up in dresses, taking you out to the blue bonnets. I, I can't remember some of the stories, but the permanent uh, marker. All, yeah, man. How fun, did, how much fun did she have? Uh, 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 <laughs> just making you, just go through all kinds of craziness when you were when you were growing up. Well, man, she did much more good than bad. I'll say I love my sister dearly and my brother, my mom yeah. and dad. Uh, here's the deal. I told you on the show, she got mad at me. She took a permanent marker. I think she was in high school, and I was eight years younger than her. We didn't get along until after I think she got out of high school was when we really started getting along because that's a huge age gap. When you're talking eight years and a kid, that's a that's a pretty big sibling gap. And either you get along really well or you don't get along hardly at all. And she got mad at me and took a black permanent marker and wrote on everything that she could find accident. That was one of my she favorites, told, yes. She told me, and she, she probably won't even own up to this, but she told me when I was a kid, I love you, Rebecca. So, look, it's just it's all fun. That's what I love about it because you go back and you laugh. But she told me, she goes, you know there's a reason that you don't have your own bedroom. It's because you weren't meant to be born. And she took a book yes. and wrote all over my stuff, man. Oh my <laughs> goodness. We had some we had some good ones growing up. But 
But no, so, I, so that's my understanding, and maybe my mom or dad can you know can clarify that for me. But but I believe that's what it what it is. Is that she she's the one who named me, and so Stephen and I. The reason I got into that is because Stephen. That's of course what everybody. That's when you know that you got real true friends when they call you by your real name. Yes. You know, and Stephen has always called me, and I, in fact, every once in a while, I get a random message on Facebook. It's like, "Hey, Robin, what's going on, man?" I'm like, "Dude, I appreciate that. You know, that is so cool." And Bridget's dad calls me. He says he calls me Robin. He's like, "What's up, Robin?" As, as long as yeah. he don't, as long as he's don't start going tweet tweetily tweet, we're okay, man. <laughs> so, and it's a Y N, right? It's R-I- no, 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 no. Uh, uh-uh. it's a, it's an I N. The, the most women, a lot of women have a Y. Men have an I. Just straight oh, up. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's an I. Okay. That's you do, <laughs> about to get me fired up over here on GMG, baby. <laughs> Be, watch out now. <laughs> A lot of friends joining us this morning. Jeffrey Black, good morning to you, buddy. Ron Clear joining us. Jack Dixon joining us. John Montgomery, Sam Rossler, Miss Olga Schroeder. They were neighbors growing up. Good morning to you, Olga. I hope uh, everything is going well. David Cody saying beautiful backdrop. I'm, I, you know, this morning, Josh, I decided to. I know you can't see it because you get, you know, you don't get to, you don't get, you just see the green. But this morning. Well, what do you have up this morning? No, I see it because yeah, I've got it pulled up on my big screen. It's beautiful. Uh, in the office. Yeah, it is a beautiful sun, sunrise. Yeah, today. Is that I, a sunset or a sunrise? I, we'll just say it's a sunrise. You know, it's kind of it yeah. looks, looks more like a sunset. We'll call it a sunrise, though. How about that? Yeah, it is It, it is beautiful, though. I, I can I can see it, and I've got it up on my big TV, so it's good. So if you're if you're watching on Facebook, you get to see that backdrop. If you're listening, of course, we got to paint the picture for you. Today I decided, Josh, even though we have the stay home, stay safe orders, about three days ago I got in my car, packed up the trailer, and I drove all the way up here to the northwest i'm actually in oregon right now and i set my table oh. yeah so i'm in oregon today doing the mo- i decided to come all the way to oregon to do the morning show and i'm going to take everything down and drive back well but, you know you do love your road trips that's for sure i'm just surprised you didn't drag nathan along with you this morning <laughs> i'm just kidding friends i'm right here in georgetown in the remote ashby real estate broadcast studio and uh, I'm, I'm, it's a green screen, okay? We change the picture almost every morning. That's how it works. I man. love it. It looks great. It really is a good-looking uh, backdrop this morning. Mark Rich joining us. Michael Price, what's going on? Hey, I like Michael. Michael but- Price. Michael Price. Check this out, Josh. I like what Michael Price said. He said, good morning, lads. How often do you lads. hear? Lads. Dude, that's cool, brother. Yes. That's straight that's up. That's class. Look, yes. when, when it's cool, I'll say that's straight up. That's straight up, Straight Michael. up. Good morning, lad. Good morning, lad. Appreciate you, Michael. Hey, Jeffrey, I love that. Jeffrey Black saying, I love you guys, and thank you for being in my life. We yeah, love- Jeffrey's a good guy. You know, I've known Jeffrey now. Hello, Jeffrey. Jeff, we call him. I've known Jeff now for almost 15 years. He's been a part of lots of different projects that we've done in the past and was a part of the youth ministry stuff that we were doing at the schools years ago called Spurs and Crossroads. When I first connected with my mentor, who I bought all these locations from and John Hargrove and and Jeff's been a part of a lot of different things that I've been a part of through the years. Used to help us out at the Ridge when we did youth camps out there and uh, just love his passion. I really do. Yeah, I've known the the Black family pretty much my entire life. I grew up at Main Street Baptist, and that's where I knew Lily and their mom, and and all of their brothers and their siblings. And just I tell you, Jeff and his brother David, they are just a tremendous young men who have always been very active and helping, and and they have a heart for people. So, buddy, I wanted to say good. And Jeff and I used to joke around. I don't know if you if you're listening. Yeah, he, yeah, he's a he's a good dude. He's a he, jokester. He, he'll, he'll, he'll he'll go back and forth with you a little bit. It's fun. Jeff and I were joking around once. We were at my cousin's on the Fourth of July when we were about, I would say, we're about twelve years old. I think Jeffrey's just a few years younger than me, and we were joking around and we were pretending, Josh. Because we were kids, we were pretending that we were getting drunk on Concord grape wine, the the uh, the sparkling non-alcoholic wine. We had yes. a, we had a bottle of the non-alcoholic wine for new for Fourth of July, and we were pretending as little kids. Lillian, don't get mad if you're listening, but we did. We were joking around as kids. We we're oh, we're drunk. We we're just being little kids, and we were drinking a bunch of that non-alcoholic sparkling wine. I forget what that <laughs> stuff's called, man. I guess that's I don't know what it is. But, you know what's so fun about Jeff is just I'll just be anywhere throughout the year and, and Jeff will just pop up right there just out of nowhere. And you're like, what's up, buddy? What are you doing? It's like, hey, man. You know, so that's uh, Jeff. Good morning. And I 
and I hope you have a great Tuesday, man. I love your your heart for people and serving, and uh, I don't know what you're into these days. It's been a little while since I've seen you, but I wish you all the best. Appreciate him. Tef Khan joining us. Good morning to you, Ms. Khan. Nancy Zinner saying the Mangums are a great fa- Christian family. Love you, Nancy, you and Pete. Good morning to you. Bubba Vadir joining us. Also, Brian Burkhart, Rob Kitty of the Georgetown. What do you say, Club. Brian? Brian, Brian. <coughs> oh, watch out! I'm coughing. Yeah, you know what, Brian? Oh, I want to tell you, Brian. Your here over this last year, your encouragement for those who are trying to get healthy and get their weight under control, and boy, you're always putting up lots of great encouraging quotes, and and I've really enjoyed those and stolen many of those over the last year. So, Brian, man, just keep it up, brother. I love you. You know that. Stolen. Watch out now. Watch out now, Brian. Yeah, and I'll tell him right on his Facebook post, I'll say, stole this, and he'll just laugh. Clip Tango Hall joining us. Uh, Nancy, Nancy was talking about your grandfather clock. Those that are listening back at the, the near the top of the hour, about five after Nancy, Josh said that maybe your clock is telling ever telling all of us to slow down a little bit. See, Nancy, Nancy's seeing things ahead of time. Nancy is for thinking. And I like that. Nancy, you're probably right. It's just saying, Hey, slow down a little bit. Everything's going to be all right. That's a song. Everything's going to be all Slow right. Slow down just a little bit Heaven. because everything's going to be all right. I had to put you on full screen there when you were singing that, Josh, just to let it really <laughs> resonate with everybody this morning. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> uh, also, Mr. Bobby Stonsenberger in San – I love San Antonio. And if I was on the radio in San Antonio, I would just say I, – I did this during the broadcast. I don't know why, Josh, but I would always say – we're live from beautiful San Antonio, Texas. I always said, instead of San Antonio, I'd always say San Antonio, Texas. I, don't I know like why. when you use your your uh, uh, Spanish or Mexican out, uh, accent with it. I, I, yeah. With San Antonio? San Antonio, Texas. I love, yeah. I love that community. I love the people. It's not as good as Georgetown, guys. It really isn't. I got to love Georgetown 120%. I love San Antonio 105%. You, you see that, Josh? I'm still over 100% of love. Bobby, over 100. So good morning to you, Bobby. Harold, man, joining us. Good morning to you, Harold. That's one thing that I've talked about on the show, being in the broadcast business, is you meet so many wonderful people. Uh, just You meet wonderful people every day if you're looking for them. But one thing that I've really enjoyed about this journey, Josh, and this industry, specifically in sports broadcasting, is meeting so many wonderful folks. And with that opportunity in Huntsville, with football and basketball and, and looking forward to hopefully we'll be back and ready to roll this fall. Uh, I've met a lot of wonderful guys that are in sports, such as Harold Mann. And uh, it's always a, a joy to talk to Harold and, and just see what he is up to and what he's doing. And you just never know, Josh, you know, who you're going to come across and, and who you're going to, who you're going to meet. Harold is the play by play voice of the Lamar Cardinals down in Southeast Texas. He's been on the, on the radio for a long time and just does an excellent job just cool and that's one other thing is when you when you travel you know or you go to another location then it's like it's it's kind of i'm not being corny but it's kind of like man i got a friend here you know i got a friend that i can say hello to and it's just exciting yeah, it's exciting man it's exciting so appreciate you harold thanks for joining us this morning buddy i hope you're doing okay man and my heart goes out to all the sports broadcasters right now because a lot of them have just been – we've been trying to figure out what's going on next. Now, a lot of the sports guys that are on radio also work at the stations as well. Coach Munoz joining us. Mr. Jim Wilson, good morning to you, Pete Riefel. And, Josh, i got to have a special shout-out this morning. There it is, baby, right there. There's that shout-out, baby. 8:30. That's the shout-out, 8.30 shout-out. <laughs> uh, my dad is on Facebook now for the first time ever, and he is watching this show – and uh, he said that he loves the show and he's proud of me. But I wanted to say, Dad, I'm proud of you. And he's watching the show, Josh. And, uh, and he may still be on. But, Dad, I wanted to say I love you and I hope everything is going well, Dad. And I appreciate all. You know, it, 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 in life, Josh, uh, we're, always, we're always seeking to grow and to mature and, and, and to just kind of figure out what we're going to do and where we're going to be and and for many people that, that have parents, you know, look up to your parents if, if they're there for you and they guide you. If you've got a best friend, look up to them. For me, it was my dad taught me a lot, Josh. And I'm going to say an inspiring message this morning that for me, my dad taught me, number one, is he always said, honor God and love God. And that always resonated with me. Even as a kid, I would ride my bike to church, man, as a kid. 
mainly because my dad wouldn't let me he didn't like me riding on 1460 so i figured well if i'm riding to church maybe i could get away with it <laughs> so you yeah. know cause that was a busy road back in the day but my dad always taught me that first and then my dad never ever to this day and even 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 to this day my dad never ever fails to say i love you and i think that is so important that if you're a parent you need to tell your kids that you know, I, in fact, one of my friends growing up, he he noticed that. He goes, your dad always says that he loves you. I said, you dead gum right. He, you doggone right he does. In the words of Coach Jason Dean, whenever he goes, you doggone yeah. right. You doggone, doggone right. right. You doggone right. My dad never failed to tell me that. And that's, to this day, I give my dad a lot of credit because he also, Josh, he taught me to be respectful. And he taught me to honor people and to be respectful to people. And I'll tell you what, man, when I had my IT business, there were so many people, especially in Sun City, that I'd do work for. They would tell me, they would say, your dad raised you with good morals and, and respect, didn't he? And I didn't even tell him about my dad. And I said, well, yes, why do you say that? Because you acknowledge me as sir or ma'am. And you asked me, when you came into the house, should I take my shoes off? That's just the little things that my dad always said to honor people, you know? So I love you, Dad, and I appreciate you joining us this morning. Charles Foreman, Paul Ortega. Over at Pearl Haven joining us. Good morning, Paul. We're going to have you guys Good on. Good morning, man. Paul. Good morning, John. We love you, John. Good to hear from you. Heather Alderetti, that's Nathan's wonderful fiance. Good morning. Albert Padilla. Got a few more here. We're getting across. Brooke Pillman. Good morning. Rusty Justice. Laura Benner. Good morning. Kim Stout. Lee Ortiz at Climate Control Pros. Lee saying his mom is great. Good morning to you, Lee. How many know? It's about you got a good mama, Lee. And Michelle Webb at Schloschke's. And I wanted to say something, too. Michelle is open for business. She's a sponsor here on HRN, Josh, and she is open. And one thing that's really cool about Michelle, not only is she such an awesome person and gives back to the community, but she loves people. And I was driving down 35 yesterday, and I looked over to the right, and she's really awesome at marketing. She has the Schloschke's vehicle right up on top of that hill where you see it when you go down 35. And in fact, Josh, that vehicle being out there, and plus I hear her commercial spot on our station you know, four or five times a day because I listen almost all day long when I'm not on the show. I always want to hear what's going on with the station. And I heard, and, and it worked for me. I mean, I'm the station owner. I'm not trying to you know, sit here and, and, uh, and say that I'd, I'm, I'm saying that it worked for me even though I've run the station. I went to Sloshkies and ate because I saw her vehicle and I heard her name and I was like, I need to go to Sloshkies today and eat. And Bridget and I got a sandwich, man. <laughs> I love that. And you know what? You know. It's, it's not uh, it's not a hard thing to push Sloshkies because they probably make some of the best sandwiches in Georgetown. And so I uh, love that uh, love that place as well. So pretty cool. Sabrina saying good morning to us. Uh, and then also we've got Sharon, uh, King, Robert Fredrickson joining us, and Ann Kaiser, good morning to you. Michelle was saying earlier that, that I was thinking of like that sparkling wine is grape juice is what it is. It's sparkling grape juice. That was the that was the quote-unquote wine, but it was sparkling grape juice. How many know Absolutely. it's so good, Joshua? What do you got Absolutely. Going, brother, what do you got going on in history today, man? You said there was some pretty amazing stuff in history today. So, Rob, did you know that today in, let me put my, my readers on, 1865, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated in the Ford Theater today. Hey, what, what, play was he, what play was he watching? That was a trivia question I had the other day, and I did not. Such a big day. You might hear some guys out here talking about some of my house. They're working on the getting swimming pool up and going, and so they're back today. And so I'm right here outside of that window right there. So, uh, you know, it doesn't say, and maybe let, 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 do, a, do a trivia right now uh, and and find out what what uh, play was being, uh, what was he attending when he was assassinated? I don't know. It doesn't say. It just gives me, this is 1865, Abraham Lincoln assassinated in Ford's Theater. Yeah, if you know. This day in history. If you know what play he was watching, let us know. I think I know what it is. I do. I know what it is now. I found it. I'm not going to say it. If you know what play Abraham Lincoln was watching, post that on the uh, on the Facebook live stream there. We're going to have a little, little contest. You're just going to get a special shout-out this morning. But if you know... <laughs> John Montgomery was saying Cats, the play Cats. I don't think so. Come on, John. I don't think so, John. 
Uh, look, John you're on, with the cat. So, also while we're waiting on that, uh, Rob, 1860 first Pony Express rider r- arrives in San Francisco from St. Joseph, Missouri. So, the first Pony Express rider arrives in San Francisco all the way from St. Joseph, Missouri. This day in history, Pony Express got kicked off and they delivered their first uh, uh, piece of correspondence and whatever that was. Yes, Listen to this. That's a mail First edition of the Webster's Dictionary is published. 1828, Noah Webster's first dictionary is published on this day in history. Man, Pretty you know, interesting. You remember using, I remember in, in school using dictionaries. I bet they don't even use them anymore. I bet it's all inter- it's all on the internet now. Do they still all use- on the phone, man? There's no, you know, it's crazy. They're, they're getting away from all of the books, and uh, but I still love to read a real, feel the pages, turn the pages, touch it, hold it, book. I don't know about you, but I still enjoy that. When we were kids, we used to look up. You know, there's words that can be considered cuss words. And so we would look them up in school and giggle and laugh. And I remember specifically taking a highlighter and highlighting a bunch of them, you know, in the dictionary. You probably were drinking some of that sparkling grape juice. Yeah, that's what it was, man. Yeah, that's cool. I did not know that, man. Hey, can I – So, 1928, first regular air passenger flight landed San Francisco, between San Francisco and Los Angeles in 1928. That's passenger airline. How many, I wonder how many, it, how many people it, it held? I don't know. It doesn't say, but it just said that that first passenger flight between San Francisco and Los Angeles started. And then in 1971, Fort Point dedicated as first national park in the Bay Area. So not a whole lot, but I thought the most interesting one was that today in history, one of the greatest presidents that uh, ever, ever lived, Abraham Lincoln, you know, of course, all the great, great equal opportunity, uh, you know, racism, all those things, you know, trying to do such a big, big thing in there um, uh, was assassinated at Ford's Theater today. So we just want to remember uh, all of our great leaders uh, today as well. Lee Ortiz, he is joking around. He said it was the premiere of Saturday Night Live. <laughs> come, come on, on now. Come on, Lee. Come on now. They have <laughs> Come on with it now. You know what it was? Uh Rob Kitty got it first. The Georgetown beard. Whenever you've got a whenever you know your beard, if you have a long beard, it kind of it your brain cells kind of trickle into your beard as well, so that just makes you even more wise if you have a beard. Did you know that, Josh? That's been scientifically I did not. That has not been scientifically proven, by the way. It's hey, I, wow. You know what, Rob, Rob? got it. We don't, you don't do them every day, but tomorrow, tomorrow, the 15th in 1912, what great, what great event that everyone has heard about took place at 2.20 a.m. in the morning. What is this? One of the big, one of the biggest tragedies that we've all talked about. We've all learned about. Matter of fact, they did one of the greatest movies about it. What do you think was one of the, Tragic events happened at 2.20 a.m. tomorrow morning in 1912. On April, See if anybody can get that one. On April the 15th? April the 15th, 1912. Oh, I just found it. I'm not going to say it because I had no clue what it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. don't cheat on your phone, but if you know it, send it in to Rob right now. Let's see who can get it first. Yeah, if you're listening on the app, you can text us at 512-686-2030 here to the studio. Again, it's 512-686-2030. I, I look. Look, if you look, that's okay. Now, I want to go back real quick while folks are looking that up. Rob <laughs> Rob Kitty again. That dude is just on fire. I told you it's the beard. He Not only, yeah. did, not only did Rob Kitty get the, the play right. Going back to what play was it that Lincoln was watching when he was a snatch? It was all it was our American cousin. Our American cousin was the play. Josh, I'll let you reveal what it was tomorrow at two twenty AM. This yeah, two twenty AM. Hey, there's a couple of really cool ones about tomorrow. While you're thinking about the nineteen twelve, two twenty AM, look at this one. There's two that this one's interesting for the medical industry. Insulin becomes generally available for diabetics in nineteen twenty three. Insulin becomes ready available for diabetics in 1923. And then listen to this one, Rob. In 1955, Ray Kroc starts the McDonald's chain of fast food restaurants. 
this day in history tomorrow. Oh, Donald Ray. Got started. Oh, Ray. Yeah. Stealing it from the brother. Oh, Ray Kroc had no idea what he was about to kick off. Well, he had no idea what he had stolen, and he was smart to franchise it. You know, he stole it from the brothers. And uh, watch the documentary. It's pretty – it'll get, get you fired. Hey, you, I just saw that man, on Netflix. Makes me get I hadn't mad. haven't seen it yet, but there's – yeah, wow. Yeah, you'll get mad watching it. But you know what? Look, here's the thing. The brothers were awesome because they they started the concept. They didn't even know what they had. The McDonald brothers they they had the process down before franchising was a thing. And Ray Kroc just had the knowledge. Ray Kroc sold ice cream machines, and he saw the way that the brothers ran that one little McDonald store and said, "Man, this could be replicated all over the place." And he kind of deceived those guys ultimately. And from what I understand, and look, it's all it's entertainment and it's a documentary movie, but from what I've researched and understood, like the brothers, they just got hosed, man. Like they ended up not getting a, a single royalty out of anything. And Ray Kroc took it and ran with it. And that's why I think why <laughs> look, man, have you heard people use the phrase that's a croc of whatever? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Is that I, where that came I from? I wonder if that's where it came from. Come on. Because <laughs> it makes sense. If it does, it makes sense. Ain't that a hey, you know, you've seen that happen quite a bit. You know, the whole Microsoft, I don't know if you've watched the documentary on how Bill Gates did a lot of his stuff, but he would he would have meetings with people and learn about ideas, and then he would take it and run with it. I mean, Facebook, that whole thing got started from Mark Zuckerberg meeting with a couple of guys who had an idea like that, and then he took it and blew it up. And So, I mean, I think a lot of that goes on in the industries today. Yeah, you know? it, it just takes – there. the thing is – there's folks who have really great ideas, but they just don't know how to get to the next level. And that's right. I, I'll be honest with you, Josh. Like, there's certain things that I do that I have. I, you know, I, th- I feel like I have really good ideas, but I'm very cautious because I, I won't go into details. But I've been burned specifically twice in life on ideas that I specific specifically have had that other people have taken those ideas that were involved with me very closely, and they've went off and kind of did their own deal with the ideas that I had started. And I'm very, 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 very cautious of that now. And that's why, you know, I, I put my guard up now, Josh, and I'm very careful about about that. And I think I try to delegate work where I can, but I think that's one of the things that I struggle with really is a lot of delegation, you know. And, and I'm so thankful with SHN to have Carl because Carl's one of my best friends and we have so many ideas. And I love what we do with SHN because we got guys like you that help out. And there's so many that are involved with our with our sports broadcasting that make it. And SHN has been a platform for me, Josh, to really to just really say, look, these guys can do this and this and this, and I love it, man. There's nothing more exciting to me than having an organization to where on a Friday night, you know, we may have ten or fifteen games going at once, and those guys are running it, and that is exciting, man. But all those years that I had click, I just could not figure out how to separate myself from the technical standpoint to being the business owner. And I think a lot of it is I just wanted to protect that business because especially in that industry, you can hire a technician and then they can, you never know, man. And, it, it, but you can't let that I've learned too, John, you can't let that fear hold you back and you can't let that fear hold you back from trusting others. Guess what? You got some I ideas. Agree. You may get burned. There's certain ideas that you have that you can't patent or copyright. And there was two specific things that there was no way I could patent or copyright those things. There's just no way. And you 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 use what we're called to do in life. What we're called to do in life is love others. But I've also learned to not be so naive and to also I've also learned to be guarded. There's it's okay to be guarded. You know, and to have agreement. Absolutely. Yeah, right. And you know, here's the thing about we're called to love people and as Christians, you know, we're called to to, to share and to grow, but God, and I tell people this all the time, you know, about, you know, people will throw grace in people's face and listen, it's, we're all about grace and we're all about love, but God, nowhere in the Bible, nowhere does it say that we're called to be doormats and to be walked on. As a matter of fact, we're called to protect each other, keep each other safe, be fruit inspectors of each other, call each other out, hold each other accountable, but nowhere does God ever expect his children. Yes, we're to be humble and we're to be grace filled, but we're never ever anywhere called to be doormats and to be walked on and to be taken advantage of. That's not grace. And so we are to protect each other. We are to to guard ourselves. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with you have a problem with someone taking advantage or 
you know, taking something that you've worked so hard on and making it their own. And so, man, I, t- I would say, if at all possible, copyright things and patent things and so forth. But I know there's some things that can't be done. And I'm so sorry that you've been burned in the past. And I can tell over the last couple of years, I've seen some things happen where you're, you've been like, wait a minute, you know, and so I get it, man. And, and uh, but I'd love your passion and I love your heart. And you know what? At the end of the day, this is what I believe with all my heart because I've seen it happen so many times. God will watch what happens to you and he'll go, okay, yeah, that, that wasn't a good deal, but I'm going to bless you through that. And then on the back side of it, you'll find something else that comes through that you never thought would. And it's because God uh, brought you through that and you learned from it and you grew from it. But then he says, okay, now I'm going to bless you in this next thing. So, you know, it all comes out and it all, it all works out for God's glory in the end. And I think, and, and I, I couldn't agree more, you know, Lee Ortiz straight up saying, said, Jesus said, buy a sword, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the thing is, the thing is too, is, is we do have, we have to have others. It would be so hypocritical of me, Josh, to say that we could do things on our own because we can't. And as a Christian, we can't do anything without Jesus Christ. I believe that with all of my heart that we, we could not be here without Christ. It would just be a, a pointless, obscure, obsolete endeavor and that's what i believe look if you're if you're not a christian that's okay but that's what i believe and to me that's what i believe i wouldn't be here there would be no point of me being here yeah here's the reality rob and you know this about me for 34 years i did it my way and man i tell you what i should be dead or in prison for the rest of my life but by god's grace he knew that one day he would pull me out and for the last 15 years apart from christ i could do nothing that's why he makes it very clear in his instruction love manual to us the bible apart from me you can do nothing now we can live and have life and so forth but good things that matter that will in the end leave a great legacy for the lord in our life apart from him we can do nothing i know that nothing exists that's good in my life apart from what christ is doing in and through me every day and that's what we love and that's what we teach at oak ridge not only to the guys that come through that are struggling with addictions and so forth, but to anyone that's a part of what we're doing, we'll know that first and foremost, apart from Christ, we absolutely can accomplish nothing good. No, that's the number one thing for me, Josh. And then, and then the number two thing is, is people that are around us that we need each other. And in order for organizations and in order for things to happen and move forward, we need each other. This station, this was something that I feel with all my heart that God said, look, do this, enjoy your passion. I told a friend years ago, and you've heard it on this show. I told a friend years ago, I said, pursue your passion, not an unknown future. And boom, he's off doing his own thing. Got married, had kids. He's been rocking and rolling. So for me to say, pursue your passion, not an unknown future. And, and, and then me not do that myself, or for me to say that on every broadcast you hear that I always say, we're not strong enough alone to make it on. We need each other for me, to, for me to say that we can't do things on our own. And then me not do that, that would be completely false. And so I'll tell you what, man, this station wouldn't exist without without people. And I talk about guys like you, Josh, that have been here on on you guys have said, look, we'll be the co-host with you. We've got wonderful guys. On Mondays, it's John Montgomery. On Tuesdays, it's you. On Wednesdays, it's Ken Covington, who without him, this show probably would have never got started three years ago. Exactly. On Thursdays, it's Chris Courtney. On Fridays, it's Lee Ortiz. Uh, Michael Price, who has been promoting our station, and I've offered him things. And Michael said, "Look, man, I just want to help." And I think that is so. And I and look, I wanted to mention you guys specifically because look, without you guys, things would not move forward. It takes multiple people, as you know, Josh, with Oak Ridge and all the wonderful help that you get, and your staff, and those people. It takes people to move forward. And I've always said, I always want to surround myself, <clears throat> excuse me, with people that are a lot smarter than me because that breathes so many wonderful ideas. And together we have that community that moves forward. So I want to encourage anybody out there today, look, you may be in a situation or a season where you don't know how you're going to get out of things. Can I tell you this this morning, that you've got to trust, you've got to find somebody that you can cling to and trust. And as a Christian, that number one person is going to be Jesus Christ. Now, if you're not a believer, look, that's your deal. I'm just sharing you what I what I believe and what what I believe with all of my heart. You've got to find somebody. You have to find somebody that you can trust, and that person has to pull you forward. I'll be honest. Without without Carl and SHN, SHN wouldn't exist. 
because Carl has yes. given Carl has given me ideas and he has motivated me a lot of times, Josh. And even though Carl's a few years younger than me, he has a lot more wisdom than I think he realizes. And he has encouraged me to say, look, this is a great idea. You've got to move forward. And so that's what I'm that's what I want to share with people today is if you've got ideas and you've got things, look, be guarded, but also know that you're not going to move forward without other people being a part of it. That you just can't. There's no way. There's no way I could run this station without other people. There's no way that you could run an Oak Ridge on your own. There's no way that H E B could could operate with a someone trying to run the checker, stock the great just we know this. And I think that's what we've got to start believing today is that we truly need each other to move forward. And that's why God put us all together. You know, that's that's my thought. I believe Josh. that with all my heart, Robin. Here's the deal, man. Ten years ago when we started Oak Ridge, it was me and my family and John Hargrove, and we started. But within a very short time, God started introducing me to all these people that we have today, and we built a staff. And then we built, the, of course, the board of directors. And, and, I mean, I have such an amazing team around the nucleus of what we're doing, which is Christ first, and then, of course, I kind of the oversee and face and build and grow. And But then from – uh, associate director to facilities guy to our house manager to our, our our kind of our all around guy and then the board of directors that surrounds and then the teachers that come out each day a different teacher each day teaching these guys and then the evenings all the different things that we do and all the people that are involved and then Thursday nights we have a ministry team of about 20 that are I mean without this team there's no way we would have seen the success and the growth and I just I mean I I I could not do what I do without this team that God has built around Oak Ridge Ministries. And I absolutely agree with you 100% that we have got to have other people. The Bible says this, and if you don't believe in what the Bible says, this is just a great tool to put to, to apply to your life. As iron sharpens iron, people sharpen each other. And we need people to not only encourage us and say, yes, yeah, yeah, be our cheerleaders, but also hold us accountable and say, hey, I don't think that's the right direction to go in. I just don't see that that's going to work out well. And we've got to be teachable and moldable and shapeable and willing to learn and grow. And that's been one of the things that I've got. I've got to constantly remind myself, listen, other people have good ideas as well. And it's not always going to work that same way all the time. And so I'm always being teachable. I tell the guys all the time, if I'm not growing, this place won't grow and if I'm not growing, we're dying. And so be teachable, be, be moldable, be shapeable. Just like you have called it says, hey, man, come on, let's go. Uh, have those people in your life that will not only cheer you on, but also give you hard truths as well. Josh, I couldn't agree more. We got two more minutes here. I know you got to split at nine. I wanted to talk about what national day it is today. There's two things. There's a lot of them. It's National Pan-American Day. I won't dig into that. It's not nothing bad. I just, we, we were getting short on time here but there's a couple of them josh that you'll really appreciate national dolphin day i know that you really enjoy dolphins uh, i do enjoy a good a good mammal uh, <laughs> a, 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 you know aquatic mammal you're right <laughs> it's national it's national pecan day pecan i've heard people say pecan you know what i got such a kick out of yesterday that you actually were buying into the fact that it might be peach cobber cobber day yeah yeah, Peach Cobber Day. So today, <laughs> national yeah, National Garden Day today. That is what it also is. Here's the two though that really stood out to me, Josh. Very, very, very big time. National Reach as High as You Can Day. My goodness, what a hey. what a better what what there, there couldn't be a better day than everything we've been talking about today. National Reach as High as You Can Day, and it's also National Look Up at the Sky Day. Where did those come from? You know what? Maybe that's just a way of uh, a new way of saying, listen, reach for the goals, reach for the stars and reach up high in all that you do today. Here it is. It's we can define reach in many ways. This from national day calendar.com. You can look up uh, Guinness world book of records. It'll show you 322 results of, of height records. We can reach for our dreams and our goals. We can reach for the stars or the sky. We can even reach for the balloon floating away from us, much like the one that carried Wizard of Oz away from Dorothy. Of course, records can be set for the oldest or the youngest to reach a particular location, age, height, or status. Look, guys, while this day may not be about setting records, it's certainly about reaching high, higher than we can think. Often, we become complacent. The National Reach as High as You Day can 
uh, reach as high as you can day is just a reminder on the calendar to not let your dreams go adrift. Reach for them and reach as high as you can. How do you observe it? Well, ask yourself this morning, friends, what are your goals? No matter how high they are, you can reach for them. And once you get there, guess what, Josh? Once you once you reach your goal, what do you think you do? Set another goal. Set another goal and go, okay, I'm here. Now what's next? And then finally, last but certainly, last but certainly not least, Josh, certainly. It's also certainly. Lo- it's look up at the sky day. This is very certain. April the 14th, it's Look Up at the Sky Day. It encourages us to admire the beauty above us. On this, boy, I'll tell you what, as a Christian man, that's you talk about admiring the beauty that's above us. Come on, man. On this day, we all hope for good weather and an opportunity to fill our eyes with sky from horizon to horizon. There are many things that you can see as you sit back, relax, and look up. The sky is beautiful blue color, the clouds, and many other shapes. Perhaps the sun and many different birds flying around that captures our attentions at night the skies the many stars the moon and even the bird or even the clouds drifting away how do you observe the look up at the sky day and i think this is really great josh as we've got just another minute here how do you observe it you spend time watching the clouds get together with your family note the different shapes and how they move at night why don't you investigate the stars Search the heavens for constellations planets in the milky way watch for a meteor shower or a single falling star and over the horizon of course, if you live way up north, an aurora borealis might begin to dance, uh, bringing on a beautiful show. While you're looking up the sky, why don't you play a game or two? You can do a lot of fun things. That is what you do today. Josh, these are this is really cool two National Day things today that have got me fired up, man. Well, I tell you what, I don't know if you've seen the moon the last couple of nights and mornings, but it's been absolutely beautiful. And you know what? I, th- I started the show this morning by saying I think God's given us all a gift. But just slow down a little bit. We had a, a, a listener say, maybe your clock is telling us all to just slow down a little bit. And so maybe today it's a beautiful day. There's lots of clouds out. You just get out and you just look around and see all the great things that are blooming. This is the coolest time of year to see spring popping out and, and it's still kind of cool out. Maybe it's a day to just sit out in your yard and just enjoy a little bit of God's creation, Rob. Thanks for letting me be on this morning, man. God bless you. And as you finish every show, I want you to know that we love you, man. We're excited about your passion and what you do. And I'm just going to beg people right now to please, Rob, never, ever, hardly ever ask for anything for himself. He's always trying to promote other people's businesses, especially these smaller businesses that are hurting a little bit right now. Please support Rob and his family by supporting this radio station. Download the app. Get involved. Tell people about it. Listen, Rob doesn't doesn't have another career. This is how he is taking care of his home, his family, and he needs our support. And I'm not just saying that to you. I write a check to Rob every month because I want Rob to know that I appreciate him. I love his passion, and we love our partnership with Rob, and we'll continue. As long as I've got pennies to give, I'm going to make sure that Rob gets a few of those as well. So, Rob, I love you, man, and I love Tuesday mornings, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Josh, appreciate you and, and all that you do, man, and and we've had a, a great partnership and, more importantly, a friendship for a long time, but a, a business partnership for several years now, and, and you really – continue to help make the gears turn and what we do so thank you josh appreciate you this morning my friend love you buddy have a great day well, once again josh harris our tuesday co-host here on hip radio network on good morning georgetown as we wind down the show hey friends i wanted to remind you again this morning uh, those that may just be joining us i talked and I'll, I'll briefly mention this here and again we appreciate josh always such a good time to have josh on the show on tuesdays with us over at oak ridge disciple house again they are a 501c3 nonprofit christian character building ministry helping men 18 and older who are suffering from drug and alcohol addiction if you or someone you know needs help friends listen there is light at the end of that tunnel that light can be found through the oak ridge disciple house josh didn't talk a lot about it this morning but look they've they've graduated i believe over 120 guys from this program there's a lot of guys out there that need help and joshua and his staff have really done a great job over the years helping these men get through their trials and tribulations and helping them to find light they've got an extremely incredible success rate because of the way that josh teaches these men in a foundation of christ that's why i believe in their organization and what they do if you got an opportunity to support them i highly encourage it it's oak ridge disciple house.com again that website is oak ridge disciple house.com for those that are just joining us a little bit earlier, and I'm going to sign off here in about five minutes, I just wanted to give one more final opportunity 
Uh, my friend Perla Canales reached out to me and said, look, their family restaurant was closed for three weeks. They're back open now, but they need help. And it is a excellent. In fact, today I'm going to put my words right where I'm going to I'm going to put my words into action. And today I'm going to get lunch from these guys because I believe in them and I love their family and what they do for our community. Uh, but the Rio Bravo Mexican Cafe needs your help. And so they've got to go orders that are available. Uh, you can get breakfast tacos as well as lunch orders. They've got excellent breakfast tacos. They're located right behind Dole Sauces in that area uh, there between Main Street Baptist Church and Jack Brown Cleaners, all in that little area. It's kind of hidden back there, but go by and see them, friends. I put their name on Facebook. It's Rio Bravo Mexican Cafe. And then also, if you want to get those orders in as well, you can call them at 512-930-1327. Again, their number is 530, uh, or 512-930-1327. I'm going to go and enjoy a great lunch today to go, of course, and I appreciate the Canales family. We love you, Perla, and your your wonderful mom and your family. You guys are tremendous. And that's what I'm going to do today. And I encourage everybody that's hearing this right now uh, to support the Canales family as they reached out and said, look, we need we need a little bit of help. What can you do? And uh, I appreciate them because they are very humble. And uh, I appreciate them reaching out to us. Friends, tomorrow we're going to be back on the air here. It is, my goodness, it's already Wednesday. No, it's yeah, it is. That is incredible. Tomorrow is already Wednesday. We'll have Ken Covington of Ken's Guitars on the show tomorrow. So make sure to join us as we bring you this show every weekday, usually around 7, sometimes 7.30 or 8, depending on the schedule. But we're on every single weekday, Monday through Friday, right here on Hip Radio Network. If you haven't already, please download the app. There's a lot of folks that listen and watch on Facebook, uh, but this station is more than just this show. We operate 24-7, 365 on the HRN app. You can download it. It's Hip Radio Network. Again, that app, Hip Radio radio network one final time also if you're a business who needs help and we are holding an auction coming up in may we want to hear from you if you need support you can fill out a form at hrngeorgetown.com forward slash support that is hrngeorgetown.com forward slash support if your business needs help if there's something you need fill out that form if you have an item that you would like to donate to that auction, we had several of them come in yesterday. We're now over $6,000 in value of items. Friends, though, we still need about 30 to 35, maybe 40 more items for this to be successful. It's going to be an online auction held in May that's going to benefit businesses right here in our community and smaller surrounding communities such as Andice, Granger, Thorndale, Thrall. The primary focus, of course, though, right here in Georgetown. If you have an item that you can donate to that online auction, visit hrngeorgetown.com forward slash auction and let us know uh, how you can help. We would love uh, for your support to help these businesses here in our community. And then last but certainly not least, if you're a business who is open and you just want to let folks know, hey, we are open, we have put together a page on our website at hrngeorgetown.com forward slash open. Again, that is hrngeorgetown.com forward slash open. Friends, I love you every morning. It's such an honor and a privilege to be able to bring you this show here as we keep you up to date and try to provide words of encouragement and also a little bit of inspiration to help you get through this. We're all in this together, friends, as I end every single broadcast reminding you this morning that we're not strong enough alone to make it on our own. We need each other. Provide a word of encouragement. Lend a hand to support. Somebody out there this morning needs you. Good morning, Georgetown, and God bless. We'll see you back tomorrow around 7 a.m. right here on KHGTDB. It's Hip Radio Network, Georgetown. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. From the Ashby Real Estate Broadcast Studio, this is HIP Radio Network, Georgetown, your hometown station.